What's here. up, ladies and gentlemen? I know you can't see me, but I'm here. Chain link. <laughs> Need to get my gloves on. Moto's hogging all the camera space. There we go. Got both cameras recording. These new gloves are so nice. <laughs> the last pair, I can actually grab them and show that. Is it this one? Yeah. Check that out. You Where's my we, finger? You know how we got that, right? Ugh. <laughs> oh. Yeah, so the new gloves don't have all the perforations in the palms, so that's mm -hmm. nice. They should last a bit longer. Oh, man. Uh, right before you started recording, I was saying I got a, a new battery, a uh, one of the lithium batteries. Yeah. So imagine, you know, taking my, my old lead battery out of my bike and how heavy it was. And then when the new battery came in the mail and I picked up the box, I damn near threw my shoulder out because I was expecting it to be the weight of a battery. Oh. And I picked <laughs> it up like so. And then I immediately thought, oh, fuck, I got robbed. <laughs> <laughs> like, I went to this site. You know, it wasn't like MotorcycleSuperstore.com. It was just like some regular, like, hey, we sell like a bunch of batteries. And so I was like, oh, I'll, I'll buy this Scorpion battery. It looks legit. It was like 126 bucks. And when I got it, it was so light that I immediately thought I got robbed. Immediately. Yep. Is it one of those glass mat batteries? Uh, it's, it's like a lithium rechargeable. Oh, it, lithium, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Super it's light. Can't wait for these new gloves to break in. They're kind of crushing my hands right now. <laughs> That's a trade-off. Like, you get gloves with extra armor and they're pretty damn stiff out of the box. Yeah. But if you go down on your hand, you're not going to feel it. And that's what's most important. Yep. Shade Tree Surgeon uh, had a dirt video where his friend ate shit really <laughs> not too bad. He didn't He didn't crash too bad, but I think he broke his finger, uh. like his pinky finger, because it slammed down on his hand. Yeah, didn't, uh, what's the name? MX-13 have, uh, or Mordeath 13. He had a pretty bad crash not too long ago, and I think he lost a finger or two. Ooh. I think. I, uh, it was during that period where we were crunching on COD, and I wasn't watching vlogs all the time. Yeah. Well, I got a question for you. Yep. We started this channel for a reason, and we've been doing a lot of, you know, fun, like, dual vlogs. But what else do fans have in store for uh, Moto Ergo Zoom and Chainlink co-channel called Chain Moto? Uh, well, how tos. Uh, next time you need, Ooh. hey, whoop whoop. <laughs> Jesus, uh, the cops. They just come out of nowhere. <laughs> it's like when you least expect them, the motorcycle cops in California are just like, what's up? Yeah. <laughs> and they know how to ride. Holy shit. Yeah. See that video of that cop during the training course? Yeah. That just lit that shit up on a big ass, heavy ass bike. <laughs> yeah. But no, the channel, um, yeah, I think we want to do uh, like the auto shows. Yes. Um, definitely the motorcycle show when it comes in the spring. Yes. And how to's, like the next time your bike needs to get its brakes bled or any or brakes bled or anything. Tutorials, can, maintenance. Yep. Um, bike reviews. Yep. New bike how to's. God damn, my exhaust is loud in your mic. <laughs> <laughs> All I hear is. <laughs> I have my helmet open. Ah, that'll your do it. exhaust got in my mouth, man. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, the big. I think the biggie would be. Um, you're not necessarily a, a brand new rider, but you're. Uh, well, what? I'm, I'm less experienced. Yeah. I'm less experienced than you are. Yeah, I'm so, willing to admit that 100%. Yeah, so we've got a nice balanced perspective. Like, I've been riding probably 30, 31 years at this point since I was a little kid at about four years old. Jesus. And uh, you've got the newer rider perspective. And um, I think we could balance out how to videos for like getting started, with the equipment you're going to need, things that you encountered. Um, that I didn't necessarily have to think about because 
I grew up with my dad telling me all this stuff at like age eight. So by the yeah. time I was ready for the street and getting my street license, um, the, I already had all the gear that I needed. So I think we'll have a really unique and interesting and balanced perspective on um, doing new bike tutorials for like how to get into motorcycling from the start to finish. So overall, a pretty balanced channel. What's also interesting is the different rider profiles that we have. Yep. You know, I am the not so average size, and you're closer to the average size, but yep. we definitely have different ergonomics. Yeah. So who knows, maybe that can help us do something. Yeah, we're even going to be able to, to look at just motorcycling from like even a budget standpoint. I don't think a lot of people really talk about the nitty gritty of what it costs to ride a motorcycle on a day-to-day -day basis. Like oh, keep, yeah. keep it maintained. The investment in buying all the gear, even cheap gear, man, will run you probably 500 bucks for the full kit, unless you go super cheap, which then you're just kind of taking, <laughs> yeah, then you're taking big risks with the quality of what you're trying to protect your ass with. Yeah. So I've seen people go down in textile and just completely obliterate it. And one one friend had a, uh, the guy that died back in des, uh, December of 2008, or 2007, he, uh, he was wearing a full textile suit, head to toe, boots, gauntlet gloves, everything. And um, when he crashed and went under that pickup truck, it, it, oh. it was, it was nothing, there was just, five pieces of him in a ditch, his engine 300 feet out in a field. Uh, all, as soon as you said, as soon as he went under that pickup truck, that's yep. all I needed to hear. Game I'm, I'm over. Sorry to hear that. Yeah, at that point, it doesn't matter what you're wearing. It's like you're you're done. So, yeah, I, after that, I will never wear textile again. And um, I, I really just realized that the whole gear versus no gear argument, unless you're going slow speeds, it's anybody's guess what's gonna happen. I mean, if you wrap yourself around a light pole, no amount of gear is gonna save you. Your chest is gonna be crushed, your back's gonna be busted. It's just gonna, not gonna be a fun time. So really, your most gonna, important piece of gear is your brain. You're gonna have a bad time. Yeah, <laughs> gonna have a bad time. Woo. Yep, so hopefully, we can get a series going. Well, not hopefully. We will get a series going that uh, talks about how to train your brain and s s the basic street survival skills. Well, you know what? I think we need to start doing that shit. Let's plan yep. one. Let's film it. Let's get it out. Yeah. We just told everybody our secret plan, and now they're going to start doing it. Yep. There's Sawyer's bike, by the way. He yep. just got it back out of the shop. Oh, that tank is so nice. It's got like 50,000 miles on it. Bonneville 7100 or 7100? It looked like there T was T100. Uh, T100. Yeah, even it's T100. <laughs> <laughs> like, I know what the fuck I'm talking about. Oh, it's me. Yeah, it's the 7100. You okay? <laughs> yeah. But yeah, our next, our next week's video could just be uh, first step. Like, how did we get into motorcycling? And, uh, there you go. And, uh, I, I, I think it's time. I, I have a lot of fun doing the dual vlogs and, you know, talking crap. We definitely need to get to the business end on this yep. and uh, actually give these people something that, you know, they can value a little more than just jokes all the time. Yeah, let's just say we'll commit to that next week. Let's do it. Sweet. Can I push the camera?